Now and again, I find myself staring at a boat that captivates my attention for reasons that are not always clear. This is one such boat. Built in Scotland by Heard and McKenzie Limited, according to a design by John McKenzie, this catch rigged motor yacht stands out with a wooden hull, meticulously crafted from Scottish lark on oak frames. This construction not only showcases exceptional craftsmanship, but also captures both my attention and the attention of boat fans worldwide. As I show you around this boat, it's easy to see why she stirs the nautical spirit of so many people. Good morning and welcome back to the channel. I really cannot wait to show you around this absolutely stunning boat. Before I do, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let's see if we can get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So only five of these beautiful boats were built. They were built in Scotland. This one was built in 1963, but recently went through a full refit. And you'll see how that refit panned out in a second as I show you around. But out of the five that were built, there are only three that are still operational. Uh, one I believe is in Greece, uh, the other one is in Tasmania, and then you've got this one. Uh, unfortunately, the other two uh, were damaged and sunk, but I'm gonna show you around this boat and I'm sure you are gonna be as blown away as I was when I first came on board. This Explore Yacht has a length of 20 meters, a beam of five meters, and a draft of 2.8 meters. As you can see on that display there, it actually shows you how much ampage the boat is drawing at any one time. So you can get a really good visual idea uh, of how much power the boat is drawing. And also over here, you've got the water intake. The way this system is set up will ensure that you never have too much pressure. Sometimes if you plug into a shore supply of water, you might have too much pressure coming into the boat. Uh, but the system on this boat will ensure that that does not happen, that you don't get too much pressure uh, on board. And also if that fails, there is redundancy built in that as well. There is also a deck washdown with a saltwater pump installed on the deck. Let's take you along the uh, port side deck. As you can see, the decks are really wide. Nice sturdy ball walks as well. You have probably already noticed, but it's worth highlighting, the teak decks on this boat are in impeccable condition. Measuring a solid 2.8 centimetres in thickness, they stand as a testament to the yacht's durability. As you can see, plenty to grab onto. So when you're walking around on the upper deck whilst you're at sea, not only can you grab onto the guard rail, but you've also got hand rails over here that you can hold onto as well. The windows each have a solar film on them, which means that the interior, especially the wheelhouse, will not be damaged by the sun's powerful ultraviolet light. I really like this well-positioned seating area in front of the wheelhouse. What a fantastic place to come and sit and enjoy the view. The boat has two anchors fitted, a haul anchor that weighs 75 kilograms and a Danforth anchor that comes in at 95 kilograms. Both have been galvanized. Now we're at the bow. If we spin around 180 degrees, we get a great view of the boat's foremast and her traditional ship's bell. In the next couple of days, I'll be uploading my favorite features video to my second channel, Boat Boy. You'll find the link for that pinned in the comments. If you want to as well, you can stow a tender here and use this as a boat deck. Obviously you've got the crane here that can launch and recover the tender on both the starboard and the port side. Here is what the foredeck looks like when it's being used as a boat deck. You can see as well how the awning can be used to create a really nice shaded area. As you can see, the outboard motor for the tender is currently stowed away here. And after the foremast is a storage area for lines and fenders or anything else you might want to keep in this area of the boat. But now let's go and check out the nav and comms equipment atop the wheelhouse. The searchlight over there on the port side big powerful Raymarine radar that's actually got a range of 75 nautical miles a FLIR camera up there as well here is the FLIR camera in operation as you can see having infrared imaging on board can be a very valuable safety feature if you need a FLIR camera then be sure to check out my affiliate shop on Linktree you'll find the relevant link pinned in the comments and also you've got the antennas over there on the starboard side 
As I mentioned earlier on in the video, the owner spent a lot of time and money on the boat when it went through a refit. Various brand new systems were installed, but the owner still honoured the boat's heritage. You will see an example of that later on in the video when I show you around the wheelhouse. The cockpit on this boat is a great place to enjoy some alfresco dining. The frame and awning were made just for this boat by the owner. After the sun goes down, the area transforms into a relaxing place to come and wind down, surrounded, of course, by your favourite people. When it comes to bringing the boat alongside, there are two electric capstans installed in this area of the boat. The owner does operate this boat himself, and features like this make operating the boat as hassle-free as possible. Now, before I guide you through the elegant interior spaces of this boat, highlighting the panelling with Burma teak golden veneers, not forgetting, of course, the incredibly impressive engine room and the wheelhouse. Let's make our way up to the coach roof for a look around. So up here on the coach roof, over there on the starboard side, we have a tender. This is the summer passerelle, uh, which as you can see is currently stowed away. And over there on the port side, we've got two life rafts. Remember, if you need to upgrade any of your sea survival or safety gear or comms gear, be sure to check out my Amazon stores. Uh, you'll find the link in the video description and you'll find the link pinned in the comments as well. I really do love the mast on this boat as well. You can see how much love the owner has put into ensuring that this boat stays in such excellent condition. When you walk around the vessel, it is easy to forget that she is 61 years old. When I was on board talking to the owner and his teenage son, it was great to hear about the many voyages they have been on as a family including their three daughters, as they cruised around the Mediterranean. It's also worth pointing out that a previous owner has taken this boat across the Atlantic on its own bottom. She was made for serious cruising. Let's head inside, starting of course in the pilot house. In the wheelhouse, we find a great blend of modern technology that works alongside the refurbished controls and analog dials. Central to this setup is a Raymarine GS165, a 15.4 inch glass bridge multifunction display paired with a GS series remote control keyboard for seamless operation. Navigation is further enhanced by including Western and Central Mediterranean charts alongside the RS130 GPS receiver ensuring accurate positioning across this vast sea region. The clear view window reminds us that this boat was built in Scotland, where you tend to find a lot of wind and rain all throughout the year. Many of the controls in this wheelhouse are the original controls that were installed on the boat when she was built, including the compass and also as well the throttle control levers and dials for the twin engines. Personally, I think that the owner has done an incredible job of utilising the latest in marine technology when it comes to the boat's control systems, whilst at the same time preserving the history of this boat. For my more technically minded subscribers, I'm sure that you appreciate the effort that has gone into the modernising of all the wiring on board this boat. But what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We even have the original builder's plate affixed to this bulkhead. As you can see over here on the starboard side, this multi-function Raymarine display also shows the various CCTV cameras installed around the boat. Down here we have some more controls and dials as well as easy access to some of the vessel's fuses. Before we look around the rest of the boat, let's just take in the visual spectacle of that traditional ship's wheel. But now let's head into the saloon and I'll show you around there, including the galley area. As we spin around 180 degrees from the wheelhouse and head aft, we enter the saloon. Over on the pool side, we have an L-shaped seating arrangement with a dining table. Opposite that, we have this TV and entertainment area. The TV does retract back into the cabinetry. In the galley, we find a Cooper's Bush oven, microwave and cooktop. As you can see, there's plenty of space in here, so if you need a hand whilst you're cooking up a meal, you and your partner can get to work prepping the food for your guests. The removable cover for this sink can also be used as a chopping board. As someone who loves to cook using fresh ingredients, I can definitely appreciate the finer details in this functional and spacious galley, including the fact they have another VHF radio in this area, a very important safety feature. 
Over the hob we have a large and powerful extractor fan. Something else I'm sure you probably already noticed are the galley fiddles dotted around this galley. To starboard we have a professional Lieber fridge and freezer. The owner and his family have spent several months at a time living on board this boat. When the owner showed me this particular feature, I absolutely loved it. So obviously when you're alongside, opening the drawers, not a problem because you're not really going to be moving at all. But when you're underway, especially when you start hitting the gnarly stuff, which let's face it, that's what this boat was designed for. These buttons actually activate magnetic locks. So you cannot open them and they won't open on their own, which if you've been on a boat in rough seas, you'll know how handy that feature is. And as I say, the current owner, when this boat was refitted, that is something that he put on board. For comfort, the boat is fitted with a Robasto heating and air conditioning system, so she's just as comfortable in warmer climates as she is in cold ones. I'm sure you've probably already noticed as well the Runthal radiators fitted throughout the interior spaces. Let me take you down now into one section of the accommodation area. This is obviously the aft section as we come down this ladder and here we find the owner's master cabin. Full beam on the stern of the vessel so you benefit from the least amount of motion obviously when the boat is underway. Standard salute for everyone. Got portholes over there, one on the port side and one over there on the starboard side. Really nice, decent sized double bed in an elevated position. So when you've had your day of cruising, just come and step up here and climb into your bed. But also, you've got a hatch here that you can open up that not only gives natural light coming into the area, uh, but also gives you additional ventilation as well. But a really nice touch. Now you've got a seating area over there on the starboard side. Lots of hanging wardrobe space. And look at that. You've got the TV that you can pull out. And when you're not watching TV, it's neatly stowed away. More storage space there. The owner has actually spent a lot of time on this boat. He was telling me that he, his wife and his four children uh, spent a couple of months on this boat at a time cruising around the Mediterranean. Uh, I can imagine that was an absolutely amazing experience. Over here we've got the shower, rainhead shower, detachable hand unit as well. Obviously the toilet, porthole over there for some additional ventilation. But yeah, what a lovely owner's cabin. A good amount of headroom in here as well. More storage under the bed. Okay, let's move forward. <clears throat> in there is the entrance to the engine room and we'll check that out in a minute. Something else I wanna show you. Again, I'm sure you're gonna love this. Open this up and what do we find? It is a mini workbench, look at that. One of the benefits of having this mini workbench outside of the engine room is that when you're carrying out minor repairs, then your ears aren't gonna be pounded by the noise of the engines. I can't wait to show you inside that engine room, but as I say, we'll go and have a look in there in a minute. Let's head back up into the saloon. Controls there for the uh, Kubota heating. Okay, let's head down here. The finish on this boat is really, really exemplary. You know, this boat was built in 1963, uh, went through a refit only a couple of years ago, and the modern touch that's been put on this boat, I think blends really well, and it still honors the original, traditional feel of this boat, but obviously with a modern twist. Got a sink over here, a twin single. The owner was telling me this is where his daughters uh, normally stay uh, when they're underway on their voyages. Plenty of space in here. Got a porthole as well. Nice reading lights over there. And look, thanks to those deck prisms, you get another source of natural light in this area. Some drawers over there. Nice table light there. Let's head over this way. And come over into this double cabin. Again, a really nice sized bed. Porthole over there natural light ventilation, you've got your sockets over there 
And it's a really, really nice headroom in here. So when you get your head down or when you wake up, quite easily get off the bed without sort of interrupting your partner. And obviously thanks to that headroom, you're not gonna be crouching down either. Again, look, if we look up here, you can see the natural light coming in, thanks to another deck prism. Nice sink. And here we have another shower. Rainhead shower. You can sit down over there so when you're underway, if it is a bit choppy, you can just sit down and anchor yourself in without being thrown around in the, the heavy stuff. So just to recap on board this boat, there are a total of eight berths spread throughout four cabins. Okay, let's move forward to the final cabin. So over here at the moment, as you can see, we've got a single bunk over there on the port side, on the starboard side, we have like a study kind of desk area, uh, but also this can be turned into a bunk as well. And in case you're wondering, because of the curvature of the hull, the mattress that will sit on here will ensure that you don't have a flow of blood rushing to your head or your feet. Uh, it levels everything out. And look, as you can see, got a Mac stowed over there. So you can come and sit here and catch up with your emails, catch up with your work. You've got access up to the upper deck, thanks to this ladder and hatch as well. So when you're at anchor or when you're alongside, you want some more fresh air down here, you can open that up. And here we have another toilet. Owing to the fact that this area has its own access to and from the upper deck, then if an owner wanted to, I think this would make a really good crew cabin. Individual controls as well for the uh, heating and the air conditioning. Fire extinguisher over there. Safety paramount as always. Uh, deck prism there. Even if I turned all these lights off, you would still get lots of natural light down here. Over here on the port side, have a pantry. Open this up. And you can store your stuff in there as well. As we make our way to the engine room, let's talk about the beating heart of this Explore yacht. She's fitted with twin Gardner 6LX engines, which produce 127 horsepower at 1500 RPM. They were overhauled in 2016. At a cruising speed, she burns between 8 to 11 litres of fuel per hour. She's also fitted with a Rolls-Royce steering system and has hydraulic zero-speed stabilisers. She comes with big hybrid service batteries and a 15kW converter. Now look at this for an engine room. Twin Gardner engines, the original engines, uh, they were recently completely overhauled. Look, you've even got the throttle control, the traditional wire throttle control. You don't get much more redundancy than that, do you? Over here you can see the uh, temperature, the ambient temperature in the engine room is monitored, as are the uh, battery banks. So this is the ambient temperature here in the engine room. Uh, and the colours in blue, they are the ambient temperatures for the battery banks. Over here we have the Webusto heater. Underneath that, the water maker, that can churn out 150 litres of fresh water per hour. Over there we've got the starboard battery bank. If I spin around over here, I have the generator. A ladder that takes us up to the uh, upper deck as well so it's another way of getting into the engine room from the upper deck if you wanted to or getting from the engine room up onto the upper deck there's the port battery bank but look at these engines they are just absolutely beautiful you know i'm not a mechanic i'm not a marine engineer but even i can appreciate the beauty of these things and do you get much better than a gardener as well Judging by the comments you leave on my videos, I know how much you love Gardner engines. This engine room really is immaculate. Sink over there, CCTV camera so you can keep an eye on proceedings down here uh, from up in the wheelhouse. But look, you can get easy access to both engines. Walk all the way around, so very easy to maintain, do your general kind of checks, oil checks, all that kind of stuff. The MATN MS60 stabilizers have 0.85 meter square fins and feature a state-of-the-art computer system, an electronic gyroscope and an inclometer for precision. The system is powered by two hydraulic cylinders, 
made from corrosion resistant stainless steel. And over here on the port side, have the chargers for the uh, battery banks. Power cube number one, power cube number two. And how many engine rooms as well have you seen that have a porthole? Not just one porthole, but two portholes. So no one over there. The generator fitted to this boat is a Mitsubishi MGV3 8.6 kilowatts whisper powered generator with a dry exhaust kit. The engine room has a total of four bilge pumps and each pump can push out 3,700 gallons of water per hour. The boat has enough capacity for 6,000 litres, which is around 1,590 gallons of diesel fuel. There are two water tanks and each one can hold 1,500 litres, which is around 396 gallons. A previous owner did use one of the water tanks as a fuel tank, but the current owner preferred to have the additional water capacity which is understandable when you consider that he and his wife would go cruising with their four young children. The boat has a top speed of around 11 knots and a cruising speed of 8.5 knots. When it comes to her range, and of course depending on load and conditions, you can expect a range of over 4,000 nautical miles. So thanks for joining me on this yacht tour. I hope you've enjoyed this boat as much as I have. At the time of making this video and uploading it to my YouTube channel, this beautiful, unique, stunning boat is currently for sale. If you'd like to find out more, then make sure you click on the link that I'll leave in the video description and also the link that I'll leave in the comments as well. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the owner for giving me the opportunity to come on board this unbelievable boat i really do appreciate it and if you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my channel then feel free to get in contact with me again you'll find my contact details in the video description and through the link that i'll pin in the comments thanks for watching if you haven't already please don't forget to give this video a like and also if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel i'll see you on the next one until next time fair winds and following seas if you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll enjoy the video that I made about this classic repack. I'll leave a link in the video description. Another one of my videos that I'd recommend if you enjoyed this video is the video that I made about this classic motor yacht built in the 30s. She's in excellent condition. Again, I'll leave a link for that video in the video description. If you are a member of my YouTube channel, then I've made a special channel members video just for you as a way of saying thank you for your support. In the video, I also go into the significance of this book on board this particular boat. If you're not a member of my YouTube channel yet, which is basically like YouTube's version of Patreon, then I'm sure by now you know where to click, either on the link pinned in the comments or the one in the video description. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those of you who have become members of my channel. I appreciate it.